a lot of times when I'm wrapping up a video and I'm editing, I think, man, I should have talked about this. I should have included this. And I just have to put the video out and get it done and move on to something else. A little while ago, I did a aluminum butt joint up in the horizontal position and I showed the backside penetration as it was going in. And after that video was done, I started thinking about a job that I did years ago, a moonlighting job. And I was welding these facade corner pieces. I think it was for Krispy Kreme donuts, I'm not sure. But it was a big rolled 90 degree piece, almost like a gutter, ornamental. But, it, but the weld needed to be sanded off into a nice sharp point. And so the most important thing on those joints was a full penetration weld. Like if you didn't punch it through really good and you sand it off the outside, you hardly got anything holding it together. Probably going to crack from expansion and contracting in the sunlight. Sometimes the most important thing is full penetration. That brings me to this concept. We had a little podcast on this over at welderskills.com. It always helps to remember the most wanted result when you're doing a welding job. Sometimes the most wanted result is, let's say it's color match. Sometimes it's hardness. Sometimes it's uh, distortion. Sometimes the weld's going to be ground off and the most wanted result is full penetration. The main thing is to always keep the main thing the main thing. All right, let's get welding. For a full penetration aluminum weld, sometimes a number five cup can help a lot. That's because of a lower argon flow rate and it limits the cleaning action, focuses that energy into the puddle. So I'm going to be using a clear one today, mainly for filming purposes, but it's also just a good cup for getting full penetration like this. So I took those two pieces from that previous video and decided to make one long run out of them, clamped them down into a butt joint, try to get no mismatch on them, a good fit up. I'm using 1 16th filler metal here for the tack welds and I'll be going to 332 filler metal for the main welding, which is something I do a lot, using a smaller filler metal for the tack welds and trying to make the tack welds small enough that you can't tell where they are once you go over them. I thought this would also be a really good opportunity to showcase this product that I sell on my store from Stronghand Tools. It's called a ARW-16 wrist rest. I just call it a prop. It's got a really smooth piece of tubing on it and when you put a TIG finger on, the TIG finger is also really smooth and it kind of makes you an automatic glide. It really glides along as if it was just made to do that. So this is going to work out really good. I set it up just a few inches below that weld and now I'm going to be able to just glide the whole way and be super comfortable. Pay attention to this arc shot here when I start this weld. Aluminum tacks can be really weak and if you heat them up and they're under any stress they can pop loose. So I'm starting about a half inch inboard. I'm going to go ahead and get a really small tack there. Just a little drop of filler metal or two and then back right into that first tack and weld and it should all consume and get full penetration all the way into that tack and you, where you really can't tell what happened. Another thing to notice is I'm not stepping out very far in between dabs of filler metal. The thinner the metal, in my experience, the less of a step you can take forward on a full penetration weld without risking kind of blowing hole and, and creating a keyhole and then having to jam wire in there to fill it up. This is not terribly thin, but it's 50 thousandths or around 1.2 millimeters. So if you step out too far, you do risk making a hole. If this was 8th inch thick metal or 090, it'd be a different thing. I could motor on out, take bigger steps, increase my travel speed. I'm just trying to keep that filler metal dabbed in there about every 16th of an inch as opposed to I might go an eighth of an inch on thicker metal. In the earlier video I used 1 16th filler metal for the whole thing and while it worked out fine I wound up having a little what looked like a little low place at the top of the bead and this is helping me fill that puddle in and keep up with it a lot easier. I'm going to make a stop here in just a minute and then show a restart. When I stop this bead, I'm not going to just let off my amperage suddenly. I'm going to taper off as I add one last drop of filler, swirl the puddle around a little bit to avoid a crater hole or crack. If you do get a little crater hole, a little dot, a dimple, you can usually reconsume it by this restart technique. This is just one technique for a restart on aluminum. There are many. I light up just at the very front of the bead or just slightly ahead of where I left off, let it heat up a little bit back up into that crater and then take a, a back step about a ripple or so. Don't get in any hurry. Make sure everything re-blends, re-melts. That usually works for me in making a good blended restart 
with no lack of penetration. You will be able to see that little area where I restarted in a few seconds here, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm just carrying this bead on. You can notice I've got a good between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch of cleaning action going outside the toes of the weld, the edges of the bead. Again, I'm only stepping out about a sixteenth of an inch at a time. As far as torch angle goes, I'm only leaning the torch back five to ten degrees and I'm pointing it upward a little bit. I find that helpful on a horizontal joint like this. A slightward upward angle helps push that argon shielding gas up since it's heavier than air. If you angle it down, sometimes you can create a little venturi and your argon is heavier than air anyway. It wants to go down anyway. It just helps me to point it upward a little bit. It's not a huge deal. You can point it straight in. It definitely works that way too. I want to tie in completely to that end tack, all the while keeping in mind what if this weld needed to be ground off on the front side. I got a full penetration weld, but isn't it strange how those tacks look different in that area? I use this Prime Weld 325X today, 120 hertz on the AC frequency, and my AC balance was set on about 30% cleaning. I set it to 43 amps, went full pedal for 050 material, 1.2 millimeter. All the rest of the details are listed right here. You can pause the video right here if you're interested in seeing everything. Hey, I support these videos with my online store at weldmonger.com. If you're interested in any of the things I used in this video, I would very much appreciate you visiting my store at weldmonger.com.